Life can be challenging, and it's easy to get wrapped up in the problems of the world. Sometimes you need to take a break, find your center, be in the moment. Sometimes you need the relaxed focus that comes with a Zen garden. But you're too busy to take a break. You can't just stop and play in the sandbox. It's a busy world. Nobody has time for a Zen garden break. I certainly don't. That's not true, I have lots of free time, but I like to make efficient use of my time. So I have continued my long career of solving real problems for real people. I have created the Autonomous Zen Garden. A Zen Garden is a dry landscape garden decorated with rocks and sand and such. You can also get them desk sized so that you can calm yourself while you're at work instead of smashing your keyboard over Kyle's head because he won't stop tapping his foot. The idea is that you can calm yourself by carefully drawing patterns. You will become more mindful, more tranquil. Your boss will hate you. Basically what you're doing is drawing patterns in the sand, uh, maybe more than one, maybe some lines, some circles, maybe some little squiggles. Then you place your accoutrements in the garden. I feel like a robot could do this. This is a job that is ripe for automation. To accomplish this task, we will need to move the rakes and draw the patterns, and also move the little rocks and pagodas on and off the board. We could build a custom robot to do this, but there are already machines that basically do everything we need to do. 3D printers. Thankfully, 3D printers have been the next big thing for a while, and they've reached that economy of scale where I can get one shipped from China for next to nothing. I bought a TiVo Tarantula. There wasn't any particular reason that I bought this one, except for the, when I went on Amazon and searched in the warehouse deals for open boxed, it was one of the cheapest ones that came up. The first step in building an autonomous Zen garden is to build your selected 3D printer. First, spend an hour peeling the paper off all this plastic. A small screwdriver will help, but you will stab yourself in the finger several times. The manual is not super great at explaining everything, but thankfully there are forums and Facebook groups to help you get it built and running. I was initially not going to install the extruder and heater and all the stuff that I didn't actually need. I'm building a Zen Garden robot, not a 3D printer. But then I remembered that I don't actually own a 3D printer, and uh, it might be useful to have one. So I just built everything. My idea was that I would ditch the controller and add my own controller based off of an Arduino. I know Arduino pretty well, and I know it can do this. Well, it turns out basically all of these inexpensive 3D printers all run off an Arduino. That's actually the controller that's already on it, so super easy. And actually on digging into the code, I realized I could program everything I needed with the machine's built-in language. The printer was cheap, and you do get what you pay for. The Z-axis is only constrained on one end, so it squeals and resonates and sounds like it's trying to connect to the 1997 internet. You've got mail. Some lubrication helped, but not enough. So I bought a mounted bearing and some spacers, and I constrained the free end so it wasn't all wobbledy wobbledy. One of the motors was noisy, and I thought I could fix it by adjusting this screw. Uh, this adjusts the power the motor gets or something. I kind of skimmed the manual. In any case, I swapped it out with another controller, and it fixed the noise. Okay. So we've got everything built and all the motors work so we can move around. Now we need to figure out how to draw in the sand and how to move the little pieces around. Basically, we need to figure out how to pick up and let go of things like rocks and pagodas. Is that a pagoda? Am I calling that the right thing? Could be a lantern. Anyway, we have to pick up each one of these and let it go. I decided I would use an electromagnet. This should work because I already have wires going to the head for this fan, and I know the G-code will let me turn the fan on and off. The electromagnet that I got is pulling about a quarter of an amp, and it looks like the fan output has a MOSFET powering it that could probably deliver enough current. I should note that I didn't actually look up the MOSFET datasheet or even verify that it was powering the fan output because I like to live on the edge. The only drawback of the magnet is that it has some holding power after you remove power to it. Um, this is a bad thing because it's going to make it harder to let go of the pieces when I need to. I thought about maybe putting some tape on the bottom might help, and it did a little bit, but we'll move that bridge when we get there. I'm going to mount all of this on a removable plastic table. That way I can use the printer in the future if I need to print something, like a new pagoda or a first pagoda. For the parts, I'm going to make a wood holder that goes in the back of the sandbox. I'm just going to machine out some pockets so the pieces have a home, a repeatable, specific home. Before we get too far, let's test this whole electromagnet thing. It does work, kind of. It picks up the larger parts, but it doesn't really grab the washers, but I'm going to try it anyway because, you know, I already bought all this stuff. So we'll go ahead and make a mount for the solenoid and glue the solenoid to the mount. 
We're gonna go ahead and just screw it right here in front of the fan. The pieces themselves need some metal to be picked up and they appear to be made from plastic. So I'm gonna glue little washers on the top of them. This should also help locate the electromagnet to the pieces as long as I put a little point on the end of the electromagnet. Okay, we've got the sand tray taped down to our table, our parts holder in place. Uh, now we have to program it. I mentioned earlier that the controller that comes with this printer runs on G-code. G-code is just a simple linear code that has one command after the other. You can't do things like loops or if-then statements, it just goes from one line to the next. You give it a code like G1, this would move the machine in a straight line from wherever it is to whatever coordinates you give it. It's a three-dimensional coordinate system, probably because we live in a three-dimensional space. Your locations are in X, Y, and Z, so if you wrote G1 followed by X0, Y0, Z0, the machine would go in a straight line from wherever it is back to the beginning or the zero point of each axis. This is the home, the front right bottom corner. Each axis can go 200 millimeters on this machine. So if you typed G1, X200, Y200, Z200, it would go to the opposite corner. The other basic commands are G2 and G3, which move it in a circle clockwise for G2 and then counterclockwise for G3. And there's other stuff like M206 turns on the fan. We'll use that one later. So we're gonna move this thing with these G codes, but to do that, we need a starting point and end point of all of our lines and curves, and we also need to know the radius of the curves. There are a few ways to do this. The simplest is to just jog your machine around manually to all your endpoints and write down the numbers on the screen as you get there. Uh, maybe better way to do this would be to print out some graph paper that is the size of your Zen garden bed, and then you can just draw patterns and then measure your points there. I have a CAD program called SOLIDWORKS that I use a lot, and so it was pretty easy for me to just draw what I wanted there and then have it automatically export all the point coordinates to Excel. I'm not going to explain how to do this because you're probably not going to do it this way unless you already have SOLIDWORKS, in which case you already know how to do it. I recommend the graph paper approach. It's good to use Excel for this or some spreadsheet program because it'll let you make easy adjustments. Like I moved my Y axis and that screwed up all of my coordinates, but I just used Excel to adjust them by all the same amount and it updated everything. To find the locations of the pieces, you need to move the machine manually to where they are. You can do this with the controller on the machine. Just tell it to move in one axis, X for instance, and then spin the knob until you get there, and then do it with the other two axes, and plug those numbers into your code. One thing to note about this code is that you usually don't want to move in all three axes at the same time. For something like this, we'll want to move up and then left and right or front to back, and then down. So my Pagoda, which may or may not be a Pagoda, is at X9, Y214, and Z31. If I'm to the right of the bridge and I tell the machine to go to that point, it will just go straight there, straight through my bridge, totally destroying my bridge. This can be an actual problem if there's something immovable in the way, the machine will error out if it sees too much force, but it could break something first. So don't do that. Before you can zen your garden, you have to rake it flat, so you have a blank slate to start from. But how do we do that here? I thought about picking up a flat dowel and dragging it across the sand, but that has some issues. For one, you don't know where the sand is, so you kind of have to just go over the whole thing back and forth, dropping a tiny bit each time. Um, also, you'd need to do it in at least two directions, so I'd need two tools. But what if we just try to vibrate the table, make it shake flat? Uh, I wrote a quick program to shake it front to back and then side to side, and then small circles and then large circles. Front to back kind of worked, but not really. Side to side didn't do anything, which at first I thought was kind of weird until I remembered that moving side to side doesn't actually move the bed, it just moves the head. Oh yeah. Circles actually work pretty well. The software has some settings for maximum jerk and acceleration. I fiddled with those for a moment to try to get it to shake more, but it just made the machine stop working. So we'll just do the circles. Unfortunately, it's not level, so it doesn't actually shake the bed flat, but we'll fix that later. Okay, I think we're good to go. I have a flat-ish surface to start from. I have my points and my G-code. Uh, before we go too nuts, I'm gonna test this code by first tricking the machine into thinking it's down in the sand when it's actually much higher. To do this, whenever the machine is trying to find its Z0, I just press the micro switch on the back. Then it thinks it's down, but it's actually higher up. This way it'll just draw the patterns in the air and I can make sure it's not gonna do anything super unexpected. Unexpected movements will definitely ruin my Zen. We'll also run it slow to be safe. Okay, here we go. That's it. That's, that's really way too slow. All right, let's jack those speeds up. Okay, it's doing its thing. It's making some lines. 
It's making some squiggles. Nice sound. Making the circles. I think we got it. Let's give it a real shot. I taped on a little pointy drawing finger here to draw on the sand, and let's see how it goes. Oh, it's doing it. It's making the lines. It's making the squiggles. It's doing the circles. I can feel the zen. So the drawing works, but the magnet idea sucks. The washers don't really work at all, and it just grabs the edge of them. I don't know if this is some weird sort of thing with a magnetic field of a donut, but uh, it doesn't work much better with a solid disc either. I'm gonna explore some different options. So out with the washers, which were glued in pretty well. I'm definitely gonna stab myself here. Oh, I just stabbed myself. I totally stabbed myself. I would ideally like a mechanism that has a positive grasp, something more significant than some invisible force. I'm a mechanical engineer. I like things to be mechanical so that I can see them and understand them. Anyway, I went with one of these guys. This is a quick release pin. It has a couple of ball bearings down here that are stuck out, and when you press the button, they can move in. So you press the button with a little bit of force, slide this through a hole, and then let go of the button, and now it's trapped. It would take a lot of force to pull it out, a lot more than the button. It's a positive lock. I thought about keeping the magnet and just ditching the washers. Maybe I could hide some metal behind the top of the pieces by drilling from the bottom almost all the way through, but these pieces are not really dimensionally accurate and they're kind of brittle. I could 3D print pieces that have little pockets for metal, but then I'd have to buy a 3D printer. Wait a minute, I own a 3D printer. Yeah, and I still don't want to do that. Frankly, I don't really care that there are small holes in the top of these pieces. It doesn't really affect my zen. Sure, people might ask questions like, why is there a hole in your rock? That's the zen hole. That's where the zen comes from. We still have to turn this thing on and off, uh, kind of like the magnet, but we do it this time by pressing this button. For that, we just need a solenoid. First, we need to know how much force the solenoid should have. To do this, we just press down on a scale with the button until it depresses. It turns out it's quite a bit, but we don't actually need the spring to be very strong. So I opened it up and swapped out the spring for a weaker one. With the modified spring, I still get pretty good gripping strength, and there's only a few ounces of force needed to press the button. I bought a solenoid that had a bit more rated force than required, just in case. So the ideal geometry for this would be to have a hole and then put a groove just inside the hole. The ball bearings would grab that groove and securely hold the piece, but we might be able to hold the piece by just using the spring forces or the ball bearings. It may be good enough for the time being. I weighed all of the pieces, and then I drilled a hole in this random piece of aluminum that I had that weighed twice as much as my rock, and using the spring force alone, it seemed to hold just fine. So I drilled holes in all the pieces, including the rock, which is actually pretty easy. You just get one of those diamond rock drill bit things. To connect the solenoid to the pin, I lathed out a piece of aluminum and tapped both sides. Then I assembled it all with thread locker and adjusted it to just the right spot. We totally screwed up all of the locations by swapping out this head, so I rechecked everything. All the X locations were the same, but the Y locations were off. I also rechecked that the bed was level to the pin. Uh, it wasn't. When the pin is just touching the bottom of the sandbox in one corner, it should also be just touching the bottom of the sandbox at the same height in the other corners. The printer has these screws to level out the bed. This is a thing you need to do if you're 3D printing, so it was pretty easy. Once that's done, you have to level the bed to earth. Um, that is so that we can shake it flat and all the sand doesn't just slide to one side again. Everything is leveled out, so if we give it a good shake, it should give us a nice flat surface. If this were a real Zen garden, you'd need a catastrophic earthquake to do this. Oh, yeah. Slight issue with the vibration approach, but it looks like a pagoda slash lantern is barely holding on. I know the XY location of all the pieces, but I need to get the new height to pick them up. So I jogged the machine to all the coordinates and then lowered it until it grabbed. And then I entered that number into my spreadsheet. So I said that I did everything in the controller with the built-in G-code, but that's not entirely true. I did make a couple of changes to the firmware. The firmware on this machine, and it turns out lots of home 3D printers, is called Marlin. It's open source and free, so you can download it and easily make changes that you want. Um, just get a copy of the Arduino software and then download the Marlin code and change whatever variables. I changed the maximum travel of the y-axis. The printable area, like I said, is 200 by 200, but the y-axis can actually travel a bit further than that, which is good, because I kind of want to zero off of the front of the bed so that it doesn't crash the head into anything. And I also want it to present farther forward when it's done. Um, the software won't let you do that because it hits the zero switch and then says don't go any farther than 200 from that. 
So you have to actually go in and edit the firmware. I found the maximum white travel variable and I just changed it from 200 to 250. I think you can go about 260 on this one, but we'll leave a little bit extra room in there so we don't break anything. This was the only change that I made to the actual firmware, um, that and I changed the name of the machine to AutoZen, but I didn't really need to do either of those things. I started digging into the software to figure out a way to automatically begin one of the files of G-Code. All you need to do is name your first file auto0.g and it will start as soon as the machine is turned on. Then I can just program in some dwell time of some time between the patterns. I don't want it going off in the middle of the night. Getting woken up in the middle of the night by a robot is definitely not going to help me be calm and centered. I added a light sensor so it knows not to continue to the next pattern if it's dark. This is pretty easy. You can buy a light sensor that just has an adjustable on or off output based on the amount of light it sees. You just adjust the screw to your light level and then plug it into one of the extra inputs. There is a G-code that just checks for a pin and waits until it sees a voltage. I decided while working on this that it wasn't quite zen enough. It has colors and wires and plastic everywhere. So I took some time to clean it up. I moved the controller to the back. I painted some parts black. I tried to make it a little more simple and a little more, you know, zen. I also got rid of these ugly gutter tube looking things. I hate these things. I got tired of looking at the terrible Z-axis motor mount, so I totally redesigned it. I added pulleys and a belt, and I made the mount much stiffer. I just had to swap a couple of wires going to the motor to get it to turn the opposite direction since it was flipped upside down. Man, I feel like this thing is taking considerably more time than I thought it would. Like, I could have built an actual full-size Zen garden in my yard by now, but then I'd have to draw the lines, and uh, maybe I could tape a rake to a Roomba and then have it go in a certain pattern. Okay, so we have all our points, again. We have all our G-code, again. We have all our pieces. Uh, we have our picker upper finger. The sand is flat. Let's do this. I should do that thing again where I test at a higher Z-height, but I'm feeling pretty confident about this one, so we'll just press the go button. Oh yeah, there it is. I didn't mention this before, but a nice bonus of using this pin to pick up and move the pieces is that I can just use it to draw in the sand too. Before with the electromagnet, I had to pick up a little pointed piece because I couldn't make the extension on the electromagnet long enough without losing too much magnetism. Maybe could have fixed this with a stronger electromagnet, or I possibly could have wound my own narrow magnet, but I like this better. The pin has a small hole in the end that I didn't want clogged with sand, so I plugged it with a tiny bit of JB Quick and sanded it flat. There is the concern of having a little bit of sand particles stuck on the pin, which could cause some issues picking up the pieces, but I found a fix for that. There were a couple issues with the drawing. I know it looks perfect, but there is a circle that is not quite concentric, this one here. What happened is I told the machine to go clockwise from this point to this point with a radius of 60.5 millimeters, but there are actually two different ways to get there with that radius. To fix this, I just went into the G-code and told it to specifically go around a defined center point. The other small issue is that the end of the circles have sand piled up where the pin just stopped and went straight up. This is no good. We need the pin to gradually rise out of the sand at the end. This was super easy to do. I just told it after every circle to do the same circle again while moving up. So it just does every circle twice, but it ends the second one higher. So the pattern is good, but we still need to move and place the pieces onto the board. We have the locations, we have the solenoid on and off coded using the fan code, since we have it plugged into the fan socket. Now we can do a test just moving the pieces. Again, I did a test with the pin higher. I tricked the machine into thinking it was at Z0 when it was higher, just like I did before. And it's good that I did, because the first movement went from home to the first XYZ location. Remember when I said you should move in Z first and then XY? Well, I forgot to do that. If I hadn't done the test at the higher Z, the pin would have crashed into the bed, uh, into the sandbox, possibly breaking the sandbox, the mounting head, shorting the electronics, and then setting my entire house on fire. There were a few iterations on the piece place test. I had to adjust the pickup and drop off height a few times times to get the parts to actually get picked up and to make sure they got dropped off too. They got stuck a couple of times because I didn't do a great job at drilling these. I kind of need to redo them. I programmed in a little shaky shaky at the top just in case the pieces didn't want to come off and this came in useful a couple of times. But I did finally get it programmed to consistently pick up and drop off all the pieces. Last thing, put all the code together and run it. All the parts work, so all together it should do its thing. We got lines, we got circles, we've got a pagoda slash lantern, a bridge, a rock. Success, autonomous Zen garden. I have automated mindfulness, calmness, and serenity.
And this is just one pattern. We know the location of the pieces, so we can program the machine to go back and move them back to their tray, shake the bed flat, and then draw whatever we want. You want more squiggles? Squiggle it up. You want more circles? You can draw pictures. You can draw whatever you, oh, that is not appropriate. It's pretty great, but it could be a little bit better. I got some new pieces so that I can do a better job of drilling them. In fact, I might just machine out pieces of plastic with grooves so that the grabber can more consistently pick up and drop them off. I was also thinking about adding another axis. Since you're not using your extruder, you have an extra axis to work with. There's actually an extra one already. This board can control two extruders. Uh, the extruders are just stepper motors that move the filament in when you're doing actual 3D printing. Anyway, this means that you can put a stepper motor on the end of your grabber. I started to do this back when I was using that electromagnet. Uh, that's what this guy is. With this control, you can also rotate the tool while it's moving, so you can use this one rake to draw several circles at once. This will vastly improve the efficiency of your autonomous Zen garden. But even without it, it's still doing spectacular gardening. Look at those lines, those curves. An autonomous Zen garden will give you precision that no human could dream of. Compare that to other people's Zen gardens. Look at those ugly squiggles. What is that? We don't have that. We have geometric accuracy to the fraction of a millimeter. With this kind of technology, you can achieve total peace and serenity, all while doing other things. A new level of calmness, oneness, with literally no effort. Except for the effort to, like, build it, and then program it, and uh, clean it up and fix it. I wasted a lot of time. What will I build next? I don't know. I do know, actually, it's right in there. But if you want to find out, hit that subscribe button and follow along. Be sure to like and share and all that other stuff, and I'll see you next time.